That will be just fine. So I'm just gonna pour that into a small bowl, just like that. And we're gonna put in some extra virgin olive oil. If you like a little Dijon mustard, that would work well in here as well, okay? So I'm just gonna leave this simple dressing to the side. Um, if you don't have your corn ready, do not worry, okay? You can put it in later at the very end, okay? So I just dropped some fresh corn. I have six ears, and I just dropped it into some boiling water, and then I just put it in the refrigerator just to cool down so I can handle it, okay? Yes, Chris? Shannon X, will the recipes be posted somewhere? Well, I do know they're on our Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, but any of the libraries that you see out there, or if you're joining from one of the libraries, go to their site and uh, they will have them up, okay? So everybody, what you're gonna do, just face this straight up and you want some to kind of stick together because you wanna show that it's fresh corn. Can you make this with canned corn? Of course you can, but there's nothing like fresh corn. And you can get some really good corn right now. It might not be your own, but then again, it depends where you are from. I know we have some libraries from Arkansas, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Utah. Uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, I know I know we have a bunch more. Yes, go ahead, Chris. Ray said, Robin, Chris, I usually sign up through Gold Coast Library, but I don't think they're doing the summer camp. Is there somewhere else I have to sign up? Sure. If you just look at one of those libraries uh, right there, go to their page and they will be able to, uh, you'll get the recipes and you'll see next week's uh, recipes as well. And Gail said, Chris, Pacey should have arrived today. I saw an interview with the author the other day and this is a perfect book for elementary kids. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Gail. Thank and you, Gail. Claire X, can you use a different vinegar? A different vinegar? A champagne uh, white wine vinegar? Or th my next choice would probably uh, like an apple cider vinegar. Okay, those would be the vinegars that I would suggest. So I am just cutting the corn off and you could do the same thing when you are ready. Penny said we have the best corn on the east end of Long Island. It is some good corn. Hello, Penny. So we are just gonna shave this. We have some really good farm stands here on Long Island. Uh, if you're ever out on the, the North Fork, uh, they have some of the best farm storms. We get some, uh, Nice tomatoes out there, um, the asparagus in the spring, corn, of course, and then pumpkins. We get some great pumpkins. We get them in late, late August, I see them out there. And just to let everyone know, I'm only reading the questions that are like about the dish and all that. But if you do have other questions or you have any other comments, you can save them to the end and then we can answer them and we'll stay here all night, all day tomorrow and <laughs> until next Tuesday. So everybody, all we are doing now is shaving the corn off and we're going to put it into a large bowl. Okay. I will go over about the recipes that we are doing next week and just a couple things that you could do ahead of time to make it easy on yourself. Okay, again, we're gonna do this for eight weeks and we're gonna go right to the middle of August and again, check the libraries that are on here and go to their page and even if you are from their library, you can go to different libraries on here and just see what the other libraries offer. That is the one great thing about virtual. We can go to so many libraries in one day now. Barber said, I missed the beginning. Is the corn already steamed? If so, for how long? Just, yeah, just drop it in some boiling water just for about three minutes. That is it. Typically, the corn, you don't have to put butter. You don't have to put salt. The only time you have to put that is if you think it's not great corn. Okay. And also, if anyone missed the beginning or they have to leave early, you can always come back to this literally any time of the day and you'll be able to watch it again. Everybody, this is what the corn looks like. I will be breaking this up a little bit. I'm going to cut up about two cups of fresh tomatoes. Now, you can use the beefsteak tomatoes, the plum tomatoes, the little cherry tomatoes. It's whatever tomato seems like it's the best out there, okay? Always keep the tomatoes face down so the moisture doesn't get in, okay? And that way they will last a lot longer. And don't refrigerate them, okay? 
So just take out the little stems just like this. Again, about two cups you want. This will yield about six cups total, okay? So I'm going to do three tomatoes. If you are making the raspberry tiramisu trifle with us in a little while, just make sure your cream cheese is out, okay? And you want 12 ounces, which is one and a half of these blocks, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna chop up these tomatoes. Now, if you wanna make this salad a little bit heartier, little grilled chicken in there, some grilled or roasted shrimp would be perfect in there, okay? And there's nothing wrong with putting different vegetables in there. You want some red onions in there. Uh, you could put it over some uh, mixed greens. That would be great too. So you could change this around really good. And if you don't like the fresh mozzarella and you wanted to add like a feta cheese, feta and corn and tomatoes go really good together. Galax, if you want to make this in the winter, can you use frozen corn? Um, I'm not a big fan of the frozen corn because it just seems like it keeps on giving water. Uh, the canned corn, if you had to do it, I would suggest that is your next step to do it. And that you can pretty much get all the water out and just kind of maybe put on paper towels and a strainer for quite a while. Okay, I am just about done with the tomatoes. So I'm gonna add this right in this big bowl right here. Just like that. I'm gonna put some scallions in. We wanna put about one bunch of the scallions. Now these are pretty large, so one bunch can always change on you, okay? So uh, this is what I got for one bunch. That's a lot, right? So everybody, let's take the little roots off. And for everybody, take these roots, go put, put them out in the yard in some nice sunny soil, and you never buy scallions ever again. They'll just keep coming back. Unless you have some deer out there like I have. But we haven't been getting as many, so I may chance it. I may go put these out there, Chris. So I'm gonna use the white parts and I'm gonna use part of the green. This is the stronger onion flavor right here and it gets milder as it goes up. These are pretty thick scallions here because we're starting to get some of the local ones. This is pretty tough, so you don't wanna use that part, okay? If anything, you could take that and put it into some stock, okay? Just to use it to get a little bit of flavor. So you can thinly slice it right down like this. And since it's corn, you want everything to be kind of uniform. So I'm just gonna turn this and give it a nice chop and add this right to the salad. If anybody has any questions of that, just please let us know. And please put the comments in there and we will read them on later on. Everybody, my Facebook page is Simply Creative Chef Rob. So if you wanna see some other programs, go to my Facebook page and hopefully you'll go there and you'll like it. And then uh, you'll see what we're doing the rest of this week. And then uh, coming up next week will be the beginning of the week will be camp. And that is on Tuesday. So I'm putting the scallions in here. And again, if you don't like a strong onion flavor, you just put half the amount in there. Okay. Gonna take some fresh basil. So I'm just gonna take some leaves here. You can use up to like one and a half cups. I like to just put it right into a glass with some water in here take these big stems off just like that okay and then take the scallions and just kind of roll them together brian x did you grow those green onions i did not because uh i maybe you just came on but it was i have scout i have deer across the street so they come and they eat them all and uh 
I guess I should plant them so they have something to eat instead of maybe my flowers. Yeah, they're just waiting for you to plant them. Brian, where are you from? And now I'm just going to put in some fresh basil. And this is called the chiffonade when you are shredding it. Okay, see that? Just like that. And now we're just going to add this right in here. Does that look like summer? Yup. Fresh mozzarella, okay? You can put in, you can buy the big ball of fresh mozzarella slices. I thought I found the perfect thing today. The little pearls. You ever see the little pearls of fresh mozzarella? Look at this ball right here. So if you have the regular ball, just cut it up into small little pieces. But since I found these pearls, and I'm just gonna put this up right here so you can see exactly what they are. They're good. They are really good. They, Don't they, worry, they, I tested them before the class. They are safe to eat and very delicious. They may yeah. be, make it really look really festive in here. Brian said Hawaii. Hawaii, wow. We got somebody watching from Hawaii. Wow, aloha. <laughs> it's probably cooler in Hawaii than it is here today. Yeah, you get the breeze. Yeah, we. it's pretty hot here today. Claire said on sale at Costco. Oh, thank you, Claire. Thank you. Everybody, I am just going to put in this fresh mozzarella. On the recipe, it says eight ounces, but there is no rule when it says with a fresh mozzarella, you can add a pound if you want, okay? Let me just take this salad and just lightly start breaking the corn and bringing this all together. Okay. That looks good. Really summery. Yes. Yeah, I know my dinner tonight. So I hope everybody is having a great summer so far. I can't believe we are coming into July 4th. And I have the perfect dessert for you in a minute to show you to make for July 4th. I'm just going to take this dressing now. Usually, I always say put in half of the dressing. But I do know this exact amount to the exact amount of corn tomatoes. This is just... Perfect, okay? I like a lot of dressing, so you could even add a little more if you wanted to. And now just give this a nice toss. If you could just like cover this and let it sit for about 15 minutes and even up to a couple hours, it just lets the flavor come together, okay? And you can even chop a little more fresh basil and just put it right on top before you serve it, okay? So this is the way your salad should look, okay? And I hope you're making it with me or that you make it over this weekend. I do wanna go over what we have coming up. Uh, our next day, second day of camp uh, is July 6th, Tuesday, and we are gonna make s'mores cookies, okay? So get the whole family together, make them together. And then while we're making them together, you can also make a nice milkshake, a salted pretzel milkshake. So we'll make that first so you can drink it while you're making the cookies. Gail said, it looks beautiful. Think I'll make it and take it to my son's small outdoor barbecue for the fourth. And Rena said, very colorful. Thank you, Gail, Rena, thank you so much. Gail, I got to come to one of your uh, outings in that. But then again, I'll say, I don't need the recipe because I think I know where you got it. But no, I, I know Gail does a lot of cooking and Gail doesn't even need my recipe. She's really good. Uh, you guys watch me all the time and thank you so much. On July 13th at 7 o'clock, if you go to my Facebook page or the libraries that are participating, we do a summer food festival this year. We had one in June, July, and August. Our next one is July 13th and we will be doing zucchini tacos with a grilled corn uh, salsa. We're gonna do balsamic and rosemary grilled chicken breast with a tomato blue cheese relish. And then we're gonna do ice cream. We're gonna make a swirled blueberry crumb cake ice cream. You don't need an ice cream machine, okay? So don't go out and buy it for that. Yes, Chris. Gail said, so easy and healthy, it looks delicious. And Scott said, it looks delicious. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, okay, let's slide on over 
to the raspberry strawberry tiramisu trifle. Okay, unless anybody has any other questions on that. Nope, don't see any. Okay. Okay, so the first thing everybody let's do, let's do the easiest part. Okay, we're just going to put some water, a little bit of sugar, and some lemon juice in a bowl. Okay, so we want to take a quarter cup of the light sugar, and you really need this a much amount, okay, so try to use that, okay, and then get a quarter cup of water, just like that, and a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. Depends on the lemons you have, uh, how many you will need. Sometimes it's about two, sometimes up to three, okay? So take the lemons out ahead of time, taking them out ahead of time, you get them the room temperature, and what that does is it gives you more lemon, okay? Because the warmer it is, the more juice will come out. Morgan said, I'm so excited for the dessert. Make this. The only bad thing about this, Morgan, is it's got to sit eight hours, so this is more perfect tomorrow. I know you probably all want to try it tonight, but please, wait till tomorrow. It's a whole different ballgame. Try tomorrow. a little bit of that, of that cream that's left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's just squeeze in about a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. James said we only needed one lemon. One le okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm actually thinking I'm at one to one and eight. I need about another half, and that'll be it. Okay, put this in here. And then just let that sit on the side, and that easy part is done. Okay. Now what you can do is you can get some berries together. Okay, get some, I've been using some blueberries in there too, but raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, any berry would do. As the peaches get really good, out on Long Island, I know uh, August is our peach season. This dessert with peaches, really good. Even mango, mango would be perfect with this one. Okay, so I am just going to cut up some strawberries. Just gonna put them in a bowl. And then Chris, if you wanna read any questions or even some of the comments that uh, we would be re reading later on, love um, to hear some of them. So everybody, just take the strawberries, take that little bottom off, okay? Make sure there's no bad spots. Get rid of that. Let's see, Alexander said hello. Hello. Uh, let's see. Anne said another great program from Chef Rob. Thank you, Ann. Thank you so much. Emily said, hello, Chef Rob. Hello, Emily. So just cut your strawberries and then put your raspberries in here. Mix it up really well. What else you have, Chris? I uh, don't see anything else okay. recently. So everybody, if you go on my Facebook page, you will see that I wrote a cookbook. It's called Simply Creative Chef Rob. And if you wanted to order it, uh, just go to it. It's uh, $15 and $3 shipping. And it has about 240 recipes. And it's breads, uh, appetizers, salads, desserts, everything. Claire, Linda, soups. Yes. Claire X, is the recipe in your book? The recipe... These two recipes, no, they are not in the book, but guess what? You got the recipes now from one of the libraries, so uh, you get the other recipes now. That was when I was a personal chef. I used to be a personal chef for many years, about 15 years, and then I was a head chef in a lot of restaurants on Long Island. Let's see. Rita asks, how many cups of fruit total are you using? Uh, you can use actually one and a half to two cups of, of the berries, okay? I've been going with close to the two berries. Uh, two cups, I'm sorry. Yeah, two berries, that's not enough. No, 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 that won't do it. The Oxford Library says hello. Hello to you guys. Thank you so much for joining and doing this. And uh, 
It's been a pleasure working with you. And I hope you have many people from your library watching. I hope we have a lot of children on there too. If there's any children uh, that want to say hello, go ahead, please, or ask me any questions you want. Let's see. Claire said, miss your stories. Claire, where are you from? Let's see. Holly said, corn salad reminds me of a twist on, the pen on a panzanella salad. How do you like to make ho homemade croutons? How do I like to make homemade croutons? Uh, I like to use like a nice, a good ciabatta bread. Toss it with some extra virgin olive oil, a little kosher salt, a little black pepper, and then put them in a saute pan and just keep flipping it on a medium heat until they get nice and crisp. They are so good. They're addicting. They're really good. And then make sure that kosher salt's on there because that really adds it. Shannon said this is, wait, hold on. Shannon said this is a wonderful way to bring families together. Can't wait to try these recipes. My kids are excited. That is wonderful. Thank you. Claire said that she's from Half Hollow Hills. Half Hollow Hills. You guys are awesome there. I go there. We have 80 people that come out. We have four. We have 40 at 4 o'clock and 40 at 7 o'clock when we do it in person. Anna said hi. And Brian X, where do you get your knives from? My knives? This one here comes from a, a German man that used to come into the restaurant I used to work at years ago. His name was Ludwig Schiff. They sell the, the knives online. This is an offset serrated knife. And what I really like about it, it just has that little arch. You know, a lot of the offset serrated knives kind of go up like this and it's a little uncomfortable. This is the most comfortable knife, serrated knife at least, uh, that I've really ever bought. Uh, I can't, I must have 15 of these knives. Uh, Cause I go in many, many libraries and uh, I have a lot of different buckets going at, at a lot of times, so that's what I use. Rohini, age six, said hi. How are you? Uh, then Morgan X, are you a head chef somewhere now? I am not a head chef anymore at any restaurant. I do teaching now. Uh, I've been teaching for, as Chris tells me, 10 years in public libraries on Long Island. But since COVID started, I have been virtually teaching across the country. And uh, we were as far as Alaska. I know we have a library from Utah on tonight. Uh, like I said, visit their libraries virtually, uh, and especially when you can, if you're on a trip, go into the different libraries. Uh, they want you back in. But so you used to be a head chef, though. I used to be a head chef, yes, probably for about 15, 16 years. Okay, so I am done with my strawberries. And I have a nice, beautiful bowl here of some fresh raspberries. I'm just going to leave those to the side. Okay. Now what you're going to do is take your food processor. Okay. You want to take 12 ounces of room temperature cream cheese. That means take it out about an hour or so ahead of time. Okay. Uh, Rena X. Hold on. Aren't you the head chef at Maison Scott? Maison Scott. Yes, Rena. Thank you. <laughs> uh, then uh, your wife said, Rena, yes, he is. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody take your cream cheese out of the packaging now. And if you are just watching and you are not making this now and you're going to make this at a different time, Go to the library that you are signed up with and watch it as you're making it. That way, no mistakes and you see how it's done again. You could tell your friends, family, go to the library that uh, had it as well. Take the cream cheese, just put that in the fruit processor. Now you could use the regular cream cheese or the reduced fat to this, okay? And it will come out great. The fat free will not though. Well, Sharon said, I missed your in-person cooking classes at Sachem Library. Thank you, Sharon. And we, we will get there. We will be back in person. I was actually just looking at the calendar, and I saw I'm going to be at your library next Wednesday for children, three classes in a row. So uh, I have a 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. And we are going to make a berry cobbler uh, with a cookie crust. 
really good. Okay, just gonna go over this. 12 ounces softened cream cheese. And now you want some heavy cream. You want two full cups of heavy cream. Okay. The Monmouth County Library said, our families are so excited to be part of the first family cooking camp. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with you guys there. So two full cups, heavy cream. Some of the best places to buy the heavy cream is probably the clubs. It's the cheapest because if you go to the regular supermarket, it's really expensive. And the ones at the clubs seem to have a longer date on them because they go through it so quickly. Okay. And now we're gonna use some lemon curd. Now we're gonna put in eight ounces, but I always go over this when I do this class. This is a 10 ounce jar. If you like your lemon, please feel free to put it in there. Yes, Chris. Rena X, would it be okay to use light cream to save calories or would that not taste as well? I always say with my recipes, try to do it the exact way that we do it. And then if you really like it that way, of course, stick with that. But if you want to cut calories, that's the way to start doing it. It will not be as rich and uh, really have that nice body to the, uh, the texture of this, okay? So if you can handle the heavy cream and go for a nice jog afterwards, it all evens out, right? So the lemon curd, let's just take this. Rita X, can I substitute lemon curd with something else? Uh, this will give it the really good consistency. It will also give it that real nice strong lemon flavor. So I am good, I like lemon, so I am gonna put in the full 10 ounces. Lemon curd has egg yolks, sugar, lemon zest, lemon juice, you can have butter in it, salt, it's a preserve with a thick consistency made from lemons. Rena said thanks. We'll stick with the heavy cream. Okay, Rena. I'll come over now for dinner. <laughs> okay. So hopefully everybody is right up to this part right here. Heavy cream, cream cheese, and the lemon curd. We're just going to put this locked in. Just gonna put my hand on it, so this way Chris does not get a bath. And I'm just gonna pulse this, okay, uh, until it gets to a nice creamy, uh, nice, like it's light and kind of fluffy, okay? And as it gets thicker, it will come out then, so Chris is safe. Okay, so if you look in there, you will be able to see exactly the way it should look. I'm gonna hold it up, okay? So you want a nice consistency, just like this. Just gonna take this right off. So we have our sugar water right here. We have our cream lemon curd right here, and we have our berries. Okay, now you can use lady fingers for this, okay? Or you can even use like these, any Italian biscuit, okay? This is what I'm using right here. These are perfect for it. You can, I'm gonna show you two different ways that you could do this, okay? One, Put it in something like this, like a little casserole type dish, okay? You can put it in a nice fancy bowl, like that. And then we do sometimes like block parties and things like that, and we will just make up a whole bunch of these little cups and then just kind of plastic wrap them and just bring them out when we go to the block party, okay? So I'm gonna make a couple of these too. I'm just gonna scoot that over there. Any questions before we do go on? Uh, don't see any. All right. And if you have a little bit of powdered sugar for tomorrow, uh, it would be perfect. It's a nice way to just kind of finish it off at the end. Just put it, and if you got a little shaker like this, 
and then put a, maybe a little bit of light, fresh whipped cream on top. It would be perfect. Yes. So, Sharon X, can you can this be done in a blender or use an immersion stick? Uh, you could use an immersion blender. Uh, a regular blender, I feel it's going to get jammed up in there. So, I would say an immersion blender because that way you can really move it around really well. So, Steve X, in the future, are you going to be able to do to video slash live stream your in-person library events so people who cannot make it to the library can watch also from the live audience with the live audience from what i'm understanding with a lot of the libraries that is what we are trying to do so we are going to try to do it live and then we are also going to uh in in person and then stream it so the folks that don't want to go out maybe january february when it's very cold uh, unless, you know, uh, Brian from uh, Hawaii, you know, he, he's always warm, right? <laughs> but the only thing would be that it would be on their page and it wouldn't be on our page. And um, sometimes they might decide they want to film it or they don't, and we don't always know. So you would just have to contact the library. And we're still doing virtual, right? Yep, yep. And I'll, and I'll keep everything up on my Facebook page. I will... Uh, I always say go to the different libraries and look at their pages and you'll see. And you see all the libraries that are on there tonight. Uh, I work with them a lot, so you'll you'll get to see when I'm there live too. Margaret X, what kind of cookie can you use besides the ladyfinger? I didn't hear that. Uh, I'll show you the one that I am using right here. Is a little marguerite. Okay, those are perfect for any Italian dry biscuit, okay? Uh, let's see. Gail said, what a great idea to live stream the in-person events. And Sharon said, that would be great, but then you can't taste the food. <laughs> then you have to come down live, right? Uh, North Trails Library said, thank you. And also, Hi, <laughs> and Rena said, I will volunteer to help out if you teach any classes in Hawaii at any of the islands. Yeah, I, I volunteer to help with some <laughs> other chef that may be doing this. <laughs> I think Gail said, true, you cannot taste the food, but you get... You don't need to drive in bad weather or get a babysitter. Right, right. Okay, let's let's go on. And we are just, I'm gonna put it in this bowl tonight. I think it might be easier for everybody just to see how to do this. Okay, so uh, depend on the amount that you're doing and the size of the lady fingers. I'm gonna layer the bottom of this bowl right here. Okay, just make sure you cover the bottom and then just turn them this way. Uh, if you double this recipe, triple it, cut it in half, it will work. Okay, some people it's just one or two in the family, some people there's eight. So uh, you, gotta, you gotta change with uh, your needs. So everybody take that cinnamon, I'm sorry, cinnamon, sugar, water, just like this, whisk it really well. Don't use it all up but then just drizzle a little bit on top of the biscuits, okay? You're only using about half of it at the most. Okay, it's gonna seep down on it later too, okay? Now we're gonna take some of the cream. Actually, I promised I was gonna do it in a cup like this. Like that. So I'm putting like one and a half in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of the sugar water right on top of it, just a little. Again, you want this to sit for eight hours at least. So if you're making it now, it'll be quite the sweet breakfast if you want it. So just take this, just kind of smear it right over this. And as I always say, doing the virtual ones is some things that we can't do in the library that we could do virtually. So uh, virtual has become a really nice thing and got us through this pandemic. And the libraries have done such a great job. Claire asks, what does the sugar water do? The sugar water, it's just going to give it a little bit of flavor. It's going to take the uh, biscuits that are very solid and kind of make them soggy, uh, almost like a bread pudding-like, tiramisu, I should say. Okay. Okay. 
And now we're gonna take some of the berries. So I'm gonna take some strawberries. I'm gonna take some raspberries. And again, if you want blueberries in there, you put blueberries, especially if it's for 4th of July. Gail said, sounds perfect for breakfast. It has fruit, dairy, and a cereal-like component. Just a good excuse, right, Gla uh, Gail, to have it for breakfast? A little sweet treat. And now some of the raspberries. Just kind of top them right off, just like this. And a few more. And then I will tell you what we are going to do next week and give you a few uh, hints on what to do. I'm going to take some more of these biscuits. Just going to go the other way with it. Just spread them out a little bit. Margaret said, I was expecting to see coffee in the ingredients, so I wasn't going to be interested, but I don't like coffee flavor. But I see that there's no coffee in it, and I thought tiramisu was usually coffee. A surprise. It usually is, but there are so many different twists with every dish there is. Um, and yes, you know what? I'm not a coffee fan either. So um, do I do a tiramisu with coffee? Absolutely. And I actually, when I do this at children's classes, whether it's virtual or in person, I do it with chocolate milk instead. So if you see a really good recipe that you think might be for you and you don't like coffee, switch it out with chocolate milk. Be perfect. Gail said, of course, I can rationalize anything delicious. <laughs> okay, take some of the sugar water again and drizzle it right on top of these biscuits. And it thins out the cream just a little bit. And you can pretty much finish it up. Just like that. Now we're gonna take the rest of the cream just gonna kind of drape it over this. And just go like that. And then we're gonna finish it off with some more berries. Rena X, do you usually use do you use the sugar water with ladyfingers as well, since they are softer than the Stelladoro biscuit? No, because the the coffee or the chocolate milk uh, that would actually be the thing that is thin and kind of make the biscuits uh, nice and kind of soggy. Okay, so I'm just putting this right on top here, just like. But that. like, if you were making this with Lady fingers instead, yeah. would you still use the sugar water? No sugar water, no, because the coffee would be... No, in this dish. Oh, in this one? No. No, I wouldn't. Okay, now let's top this off with the rest of the berries. As much as you want to put on there. Some more strawberries on here. You would take some plastic wrap and wrap it really tight and put it in the refrigerator for the eight hours, like I was saying. Irina asked, how similar is this cream to mascarpone cheese? Uh, really, really close. Uh, you could actually use mascarpone cream cheese with this, but you still would want to add the heavy cream and the lemon curd to it, okay? And now finish this off with some raspberries. The Monmouth County Library said chocolate milk is a wonderful choice. You don't like coffee either, do you? Okay, so you can see the raspberries in both of these. Like I said, you could always take some blueberries like that right on top. You would take something like this, if you got like this, like press and seal, and just cover it really, really well. Okay, and just get all the air out. But I wanna show everybody, when it is done and before you enjoy it, again, you could put some whipped cream on it, and you can always, to make it look really pretty, hit it just like this, okay, with a little bit of powdered sugar, 
makes it really festive. They said, well, for the kids anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be perfect. So this is the fresh mozzarella and corn salad with the basil and the scallions. And this is the raspberry strawberry tiramisu trifle. Barbara said the blueberries look beautiful. They are beautiful. There are so many different places that have them really good right now. And then they're perfect, like right till the end of July. And then they start kind of going away. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. I want to show everybody a little something else, a little something extra. Okay. Before we do one other thing, I just want to go over next week's recipes, the s'mores muffins, uh, I'm sorry, s'mores cookies. Make sure the butter, take it out about an hour, hour and a half ahead of time because it's supposed to be room temperature. Let it just soften, okay? Really important. Yes, Chris? Gail said it looks delicious. Thank you, Gail. Thanks so much. Uh, just have all the ingredients out, okay? We will start next week with the uh, salted pretzel caramel uh, milkshake. And then while we are making the cookies, you can sip on that drink, okay? Because the cookies be uh, ready later on, okay? That takes a little bit. So you might even have that the next day. So let me just show everybody this. I just have a double burner on here, okay? A little water in there. I put just a dot of oil in here, vegetable oil. Donna said, hi, Rob. We miss coming to the Comsawag Library. How are you, Donna? I hope you're doing good. We have some plans on being back there because you have a wonderful library. Christine does such a great job with you guys. Everybody just take this and melt the chocolate down. It only takes a minute or two at the most. Okay, I'm using a pastry brush, okay, not a paintbrush. You just want to get that nice and soft. Why was it green? No kidding. <laughs> I painted the fence yesterday. Yeah. Okay. That is good. I'm going to take a waffle ice cream cone. This is something everybody just watch. You can make it on your own, make it at home, just write notes. There's no recipe for this. It's just enjoy it and watch so take a little bit of melted chocolate you can rub the inside of your cone just like this and then and i do this for the children and the teens at all the libraries and then they they just paint their chocolate uh on the ice cream cone and i always say just leave just a little bit so you can handle it okay where chocolate doesn't get over your hands but a lot of them they don't listen because they want chocolate over every bit of this so we have a lot of programs coming up so check out my facebook page simply creative chef rob there are some libraries on here that we are doing dog treats so we are going to make uh, some dog biscuits so if you have a dog or you just want to bring some to an animal shelter just check out my Facebook page every week and uh, you'll get to see where we are doing it, okay? We have some classes. We're going to do gelato. We're going to do ice cream. James said we grew some fresh blueberries and we, we are putting that on the top. Oh, absolutely perfect. This right here is some raw sugar. So what this is, it's called turbinado sugar. It's what's on sugar cookies. And just sprinkle just a little bit on there. Just gives it a nice little crunch to it. Claire said, us adults are kids in our hearts. I know that, you know, so, and that's the reason I did this for adults at some libraries already too. Claire, did I do this at your library? Okay, I'm just going to leave that right there for right now. I'm just going to take this, some blueberries, put some blueberries right in here. Cut up a few strawberries. I call this buried treasure, okay? So I've been doing this one for quite some time and uh, 
it's just a neat kind of fancy dish if you kind of have a uh, kind of a heavy meal and you want something really light not like a tiramisu trifle you just said everything looks delicious do you say the recipes are on your facebook page they're on my facebook page but then they're also on all the libraries out there so if you're on with one of the libraries go to their page okay uh, Except for this Berry Treasure one. Yeah, right? this is just, I'm showing you exactly how to do it. And Shannon said, my boys volunteer to test out your chocolate cone. They do. <laughs> do they live around the corner? Probably not. And Claire said, probably, that you did at, their li at her library. Oh, okay. Okay. So, everybody, I have some blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. Again, you can use blackberries. So... When I started doing this, this one I've probably been doing for 20 years, to make a sauce for it. I said, it needs a little bit of a sauce. So you can either, I'll tell you a quick way, or you can make it fresh. You could take some raspberries, put them in a blender with just a little bit of honey or a little sugar in there, blend it up, and just put it in a squeeze bottle, and that would be really tasty with this. Or you could buy like the Smuckers uh, that has the raspberry uh, glaze that you put on ice cream. Put it in a squeeze bottle. So what you would do, just take a little bit of the fresh raspberry sauce, put it right on there. It's gonna give this a good toss. So it really coats them really well. Shannon said no, we're in Massachusetts. Uh, do you want me to bring them to you, Shannon? I'll take the ferry over. We're in Massachusetts. And everybody, I'm just gonna take these berries just like this, put them in the waffle ice cream cone. Like that. Okay, so it makes it really pretty. Hold it down like that. If they fall out, it is fine because it's just gonna make the plate look good. And I'm actually gonna Put some around the plate here too. So it's kind of, they're just kind of bursting out. Shannon said Tewksbury. Tewksbury. Yep. Your library, I know, is part of this and thank you to them. I want to wipe the side of this plate right here. Shannon said it looks so delicious. We'd be happy to drive to you for <laughs> it. <laughs> so now, if you went to a restaurant, this would probably be like $10, right? Something like that. But if they want to get like 14 or 15 dollars out of you you take a little bit of the sauce put it in a squeeze bottle and just go like that galex could you mix the berries with some of the trifle cream and put them in the cone oh absolutely that'd be good yeah like a berries and cream i have done this one with peaches as well too and and put like a little cream sauce, like a little sour cream or Greek yogurt in there. Um, and it was peaches and cream and a waffle ice cream cone. So I'm gonna hold this up, Chris. I'm gonna come over here. I'll put this one right here. And we will stay on to answer whatever questions uh, that anybody may have. Again, if you go to my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, and you want to see some other programs, uh, please do that. I have another class tomorrow night. Um, and then um, tomorrow night, uh, it's at the Ledyard Public Library in Connecticut. So if you want to see that, just go to their page. That's on Zoom, right? It's on Zoom. And then the Sayville Public Library, and that is uh, on Wednesday. And that's on Facebook. Yes, Chris. Uh, Claire said, out eats so much more. Emily said, I want that. It looks so good. Uh, Gail said, this will be a great project for my granddaughter this summer. Yeah. Uh, Gail said, thank you from the Bayport Blue Point Public Library. Barbara Hi, said, Gail. Barbara said, thanks for a great class. And Margaret asked, what was in the squeeze bottle that you put on the ice cream cone? Just uh, fresh raspberries, a little bit of honey, and just a little bit of sugar. I put it in a blender and just squeeze it out. Again, if you want to make it simple, just buy some of the ice cream topping. You're know, doing it with kids and you want to do something like that, you do it that way too. Uh, let's see. Rena said, thanks, Chef. The Oxford Library said, thank you. Rita said, thank you for a good class. You made me hungry for dessert now. Claire said, you'll be by us July 23rd. 
Uh, Ray said, thank you. Have a great night. Thank the you. Blasberg Memorial Library said, thank you. Yummy. And Catherine said, my son and I have been watching. Everything looks so good. We're, go we're both looking forward to making these recipes. Thanks for a fun class. Thank you so much. Thank Scott you. said, thank you. Looking forward to tuning in next week. Penny right. said, thank you from the South Load Free Library. Gail said, thanks, Chef and Chris. Wonderful as usual. And I love the fact that your foods not only taste wonderful, they look beautiful. Thank you. The Monmouth County Library said, looks so good. Thank you, Chef. You're Kathy welcome. said, thank you. And Morgan said, thank you. You're all so welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody, I hope you have a, a great 4th of July. And I'll see you on Tuesday the 6th. Uh, but again, tomorrow I have another class uh, at 7 o'clock, I think it is, Chris. Uh, yep. 7 o'clock, thank you. And, uh, and then 6.30 on Wednesday, okay? So have a great...